Okay, have you ever started learning something, especially something technical, and had great enthusiasm at the beginning? Only a few weeks, a few months later, you wonder where that went? Why all of a sudden do we always seem to find ourselves stopping to learn what we started? Especially when it comes to something new in your career, technical or otherwise. Well, first off, you're not alone. In fact, 80% of people who start learning a new skill quit within the first three months, according to studies. But what if I told you there was a way to break this cycle? And this video came to me as I'm sitting here in my hotel room in Seattle. Uh, I'm attending the Microsoft Build conference. I'm someone who's currently focused on learning and studying AI and machine learning. And doing so well on a work trip and you know not in my normal environment is the last thing I want to do. But I know I need to. This brought up old kind of thoughts or behaviors that I personally had where I would start learning something new because it was hot, trendy, whatever the case may be, or I thought it would help me with my salary or my career, but then I just fall off. And I mean, learning new skills in today's environment is more important than ever. We are seeing technology evolve at a faster pace than we ever have. To keep up with it, we need to continuously be learning. Now, it doesn't mean to constantly be, uh, you know, overkill with learning new things, but finding what you are passionate about, and when you do, then actually taking the time to understand what you are learning, to become an expert in it, and not just something that you start and then stop. I mean, let's take a look back in history. Learning has undergone significant changes. In the past, education was often limited to privileged individuals and focused on memorization. Then came the advent of the printing press. Yes, these big old things that allowed for knowledge to start becoming more accessible. Next up was the internet. Hi, that's what we're communicating on right now. That was, that was a bad joke. You get what I mean though. Where knowledge became accessible to the masses. I mean, anything you want to learn is available online. And the challenge really has shifted from gaining access to this knowledge to having so much knowledge that we don't know how to stick with something. We don't know how to focus and continue to learn what we want to actually learn. We just get overwhelmed and shift our focus again. Now, there are many reasons so many of us end up quitting what we are learning. I mean, from starting a family to lack of time, well, I guess that goes hand in hand, to lack of resources or feeling that way anyways, maybe you need a tutor or a community, or even yet the absence of a clear learning path, not really knowing where to learn. And yes, that is very possible, actually almost more so than ever now online, which is kind of, it sounds counterintuitive because nowadays there are so many resources available online, you think it would be the opposite, but in reality, it's this information overload that we are constantly bombarded with. But there are solutions, there are scientific back solutions that have really worked for me, I'm going to share with you, that will help you be able to focus when you are learning something new and stick with it. That is the most important part. Whether it be a technical skill, whether it be a skill related, a soft skill related to your career as well, anything like that. These tips are things that you can apply today. Now, the first one is called interleaved practice, and this is really interesting. Interleaved practice involves alternating between different topics or skills during your learning sessions. So, for example, say you are learning a concept within AI. Say you are learning about supervised learning. You're studying it, you're wrapping your head around it. With interleaved practice, what you would do is then switch into a different topic. So maybe it's something more so uh, focused on deep learning or machine learning, whatever the case is. Now, I didn't say unsupervised learning uh, as the opposite, you know, of course, to supervised learning this example, because you want to take something that is still a little bit intertwined as to what you are learning, but not so much that it feels like you're just continuing on. It's a continuation. It needs to feel different. And this is really interesting. There was research conducted in 2008 by Cornell that found interleaved practice actually enhances retention and learning compared to block practice, which is focusing on one skill at a time. And why this works is because by switching between topics, it challenges your brain, it keeps it active, it keeps it awake to make connections and develop a deeper understanding. Okay, the next one is really cool. It's called elaborate interrogation. So listen to this. Elaborate interrogation is a technique where you ask yourself why questions while learning. And this one has helped me significantly. Okay, so here's some data behind it. A study by Donalski in 2013 showed that elaborative interrogation improves learning outcomes by encouraging a deep processing of information. So here's an example. Say you are learning any concept. 
When as you are learning it and you're going down this path, take a step back and ask, why is this important? And I remember the first time this was shared with me, it was a manager uh, when I worked at IBM actually, and I was talking to them about Angular at the time. And they said, well, Tiff, why are we using this framework? Why are we using this technology? And it took me back a sec. I thought, well, this is just what the client picked. This is what we're supposed to use. But when you really take a step back and uncover the why, why are you learning something? Why is this concept important to understand? That is a very tough question to answer. And when you are able to answer that, you will unlock so much learnings within that. Okay, next up, this one is called dual coding. And no, it's not coding related, but you can use it to learn different technical topics. And this one is interesting because it involves the senses, I guess. So what this is, is this was a study done by Meyer and Anderson back in the 90s, but it's still very relevant and spoken about a lot today. And they found that presenting information in both verbal and visual formats would lead to better learning outcomes. So both verbal and visual. So how would this work? This is a great example of when you are learning something, creating visual aids such as diagrams or using them to help you learn. And then using these diagrams to complement your notes, make sure they're physically handwritten notes as well because that is such a big help versus when you are typing, you actually, it's proven by so many people that, not just people, scientists, that when you type, when you write out your notes, it is so much more efficient in retaining information than when you are typing. So this is key. And the other thing with this too is verbal. So actually speaking out loud, I mean, this is where the rubber ducky method, rubber duck method comes in, where you are actually just speaking out loud into the void, if you will, about what you are learning. Because what that will do is it will show if there are any holes in your learning. Because oftentimes, whether you are explaining it to the void or you are explaining it to a person, there will be gaps in your knowledge. You might think in your mind as you are studying that, oh yeah, I got that, this is great. But then, especially if you have the opportunity to share your learnings with another human versus the void, and they start asking questions, they don't know anything about this topic, it will really help retain it. Okay, those are the four science-backed techniques that will really help you be able to focus in on your learnings. And not only that, but when you are using techniques that help you focus, retain information, it is more motivating to keep on going. The reality is a lot of us give up on when we are learning because it's challenging. Nothing seems to stick. We aren't making progress. You know, we can use excuses of lack of time, resources, etc. But if you were, to spend a few minutes every day or throughout the week to learn something new using these techniques and you actually see yourself making progress, it is significantly easier to carry on with it long term and also get excited about it. Knowing that you are making progress, you can know, you can sense that you have come such a far away from when you started versus constantly having to go back because you don't have a plan in action, you don't have these techniques in action, and you always are going back to the beginning to learn again. All right. Those are my four techniques. I use them all throughout learning different things. I, I love them all. And I just, I love merging science with different techniques for studying because these techniques have been studied for so long. You can search up any of them that it's proven methods that work for so many different learners and types of individuals. And it's exciting when you find something that will actually help you learn long term. On that note, what are you learning right now? Leave in the comments, leave in the comments what questions you have, what videos you want me to create. I mean, that's how I make this content is for you, for what you want to hear about. All right, check out this view though. This is how we'll end it. Oh, oh pretty cool. Bye everyone. Oh, hit that subscribe button. <laughs>